not Legion Go S benchmarks, the Intel B570 has released and, uh, and the rest of them are getting rid of GPUs. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, January 17th, 2025. And we're gonna remind you once again, we got that PC giveaway that's gonna be drawn in a week. The original drawing was supposed to be today, but I actually can't make it to, to the office to do it uh, for personal reasons. So we delayed it a week. So you still have time to enter into the 14900KF RTX 4090 PC giveaway that we're gonna be doing over on Twitch. We'd love to see you there. And what I would love to see is more gaming handhelds. Big fan of them, love to have those around. I probably could have put the fact that the Switch 2 got announced at the beginning, but you know, for Nintendo. But we have benchmarks coming out on the Z2 Go, which is supposed to go into the Lenovo Legion Go S. And according to all of the headlines, that you might read, 10% slower than the Z1 Extreme Legion Go S clashes with the ROG Ally X. And this is courtesy of FPS VN who got their hands on these consoles to do the test. So there's a bunch of different benchmarks that you can check out and see the difference between the Z2 Go, which is a generation older in multiple aspects than the Z1 Extreme. So it's an interesting comparison, but unfortunately the way that other headlines are making it come across, not the original uh, benchmarker. It's just kind of misleading to some extent because the ROG Ally X, while yes, it is faster than the Legion Go S, part of that is for a reason that we actually discovered in our review of the ROG Ally X. When you compare that to the regular ROG Ally, they have the exact same chip, but the Ally X is just faster. You wanna know how they do that? More RAM. That's, it's faster RAM, more. That's that's the difference, not necessarily the CPU. And the margin between the Z2 Go and the Z1 Extreme is about the same margin that we found between the ROG Ally and the Ally X. So it appears like the Z2 Go is more comparable to the regular ROG Ally. And my guess is that the Legion Go S is gonna be more priced in line with the ROG Ally, not the 799 ROG Ally X. And so I think this is appropriate performance especially if it's even cheaper than that. I, uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily poo-pooing that. I think that the Z2 Go Legion Go S appears to be pretty dang decent. And you know what? You can prop your hands up right on your table and just play games to your heart's content, especially if you check out today's video sponsor. How long do you sit at your desk a day? If the hour count is high enough, you don't want to tell people, then maybe you should think about a better desk, like the one from today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. The FlexiSpot E7 Pro standing desk was voted the best work from home standing desk by TechRadar from 2021 to 2024, and for good reason. The E7 Pro features a 440 pound lift capacity and a height range from 25 inches all the way up to 50.6 inches. Now, instead of hunching over all day at your old, short, wobbly desk, you can give your back a break and improve your leg circulation by standing while you work. The E7 Pro features a super easy to use keycap that shows the height as you adjust. You can move the desk higher or lower with the arrows, then set your preferred height using the one and two buttons. They even indicate which position each button is for. Unlike other flimsy desks, the FlexiSpot E7 Pro's frame is constructed of solid automotive grade steel with a thickened design to the legs, ensuring your desk stays stable even at standing heights. The standing frame is also adjustable so it can extend to fit a variety of different desktop sizes, like this spacious 60 by 30 inch bamboo desktop, also from FlexiSpot. However, if you do already have a suitable desktop, you can just pick up the E7 Pro as just the frame. Also, if you get your desk and aren't totally in love, FlexiSpot offers a 30 day return window. But when you do decide to keep it, which you will, FlexiSpot offers a whopping 15 year warranty. In addition to great standing desks, FlexiSpot also makes great space saving treadmills and walking pads. Recently, we took a look at FlexiSpot's two-in-one walking treadmill, and now we have their auto incline walking treadmill. This walking treadmill features a compact and easy to store design, perfect for use at your standing desk. Capable of a 12% incline and speeds from 0.6 to four miles per hour, FlexiSpot's powerful and quiet motor gives you a great way to stay moving throughout the day. You can even listen to your music through the built-in Bluetooth speaker while you get your workout in. Get your dream setup started today by checking out both the E7 Pro standing desk and the auto incline walking treadmill from FlexiSpot. You can use my code YTE7P50 for an extra $50 off your new E7 Pro standing desk. Check FlexiSpot out via the link in the description below and save even more by adding your desk and walking treadmill as a combo. Thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring today's video. Well, it turns out this year you're going to have a ton of gaming handhelds that you can walk on the FlexiSpot treadmill and play, get your fitness in.
in at the same time, just make sure you don't fall off. It can be very dangerous. But yesterday we got the official unveiling of the Nintendo Switch 2. This wasn't the announcement. Nintendo has confirmed for many times that they are indeed going to be releasing a new console. It is called the Nintendo Switch 2. And essentially everything that got shown off was precisely called out by the leaks that have been coming out for the past few weeks and months, including things like the stuff we saw at CES with a case manufacturer actually having their own prototype there, and it looks pretty much identical to that. So it's everything we thought. The Joy-Cons are magnetically attached. It's an 8-inch LCD screen. It does have a kickstand on the back. It does have a curved rounded dock. That's all there. And while Nintendo has announced it, what they are also saying is that they are not going to give us any more technical details until April 2nd, which Number one, we'll give uh, April Fool's enthusiasts a ton of ammo to just work with about leaks the day before. But then also, secondly, they're gonna have Switch 2 experiences all across the world at specific dates between April and May. So it's not quite clear when this console is gonna launch. Nintendo did not give a ton of details. You could kind of glean some stuff out of this, like there's Mario Kart in this little picture over here, and allegedly it can support 24 riders in it. There's just some suspect details that you can kind of figure out from that. But one of the things that Nintendo has said is that Switch games are going to be compatible with the Switch 2. There are some exceptions, and Nintendo didn't clarify what that would be, but if I had to guess, it's going to be for things like Nintendo Labo, and then if, or Labo, however you want to pronounce it, and then um, you'll notice that the Joy-Cons from the Switch 1 had IR blasters, the Switch 2 doesn't have that, so any game that supported that functionality likely won't be supported on the Switch 2, but other than that, it should all be supported on the Switch 2, which is one of the reasons why they cracked down on emulators. Why would you buy a faster Switch if your PC can be that faster Switch? You wouldn't, so crack down on the emulators. Additionally, there was a rumor that came out that the Joy-Cons could be used as mices, just like the Legion Go, and they pretty much confirmed that with how they showed off these Joy-Cons in the trailer. I'm not gonna play the trailer, because. I don't want to get copyright stricken from Nintendo, freak them. Um, but they kind of showed them racing around like mice, and they kind of implied that they drift, which, like, was that a nod to the jo joystick drift that the original one had? It's it's not quite clear, but there is some conversation about why are they announcing the console now, showing it off, but then not having more details for two and a half months. And from what I've gathered, it's essentially because it gives game developers and game companies the ability to say that their games are coming out for the Switch 2. So this, this next two and a half months as there's new games being unveiled, they can say we're supported on the Switch 2 and that's going to uh, essentially allow them to have that. And just as a reminder, Call of Duty is guaranteed to come out on the next gen Switch. They have a 10 year contract with Microsoft in order to do that. So Switch 2, sometime this year, alleged price is gonna be about the same as the Switch 1. It looks to be a pretty decent upgrade. They didn't go into the tech specs, but all of the rumors and leaks seem to make it appear like it's an RTX 20 series card, but it's like 7 75% of an RTX 2060 mobile based on the amount of CUDA cores it has. And then when you break down the teraflops, the handheld mode of the Switch 2 is allegedly supposed to be 7% faster than the Steam Deck in terms of teraflops. And then when it's docked, it's about twice as fast as the Steam Deck, allegedly because of higher boost clocks. There's not gonna be an eGPU or anything baked into the dock. So a lot of interesting details coming out about the Switch 2 right now. And interesting details coming out about the B570 yesterday Intel's latest GPU that's coming in at the $220 price point. And there are tons of reviews. As always, I highly recommend you check out Video Cards Roundup where they give you a various different outlets that have reviewed this card. But when you break it down, you can check out Hardware Unbox. They, we have them linked down below. This essentially boils down to if you're going to try to buy a card at this price point, it's probably better that you get a 7600 or the B580. The B570 doesn't make a ton of sense, especially when you can Consider that it gets worse performance when you go below a Ryzen 5 5600. So if you have a CPU that's below that in terms of performance, you're gonna have a rougher time just due to all the CPU overhead that Intel takes up. If you're on 5600 and above, well then you're kinda in that weird place where getting a B580 makes more sense, but those aren't in stock, so you kinda, the RX 7600 is like the card to get at that price point. It's not that the B570 is bad, especially if you have a competent CPU, it's just that the price point doesn't make it super enticing and the B580's more of the interactive offer, but again, stock issues, can't pick them up. And you couldn't pick up Windows x86 
for a MacBook since they switched over to Apple Silicon. Until now, Parallels announcing that they have x86 operating system support now for Apple Silicon, which will allow you to install Windows 10, Windows 11, various different versions of Linux. So you don't have to use Rosetta, it's just gonna be supported. However, this is in beta and they caveat it by saying that performance is slow really slow. Windows boot time is about two to seven minutes and Windows operating system responsiveness is also low and there's things like it doesn't support USB. There are difficulties with it actually detecting devices plugged into your PC and uh, sound not working. So beta, they're still developing it, but dual booting might be coming back to MacBooks. There is the ARM version of Windows that you can use, but as I've checked out when I reviewed the Qualcomm Snapdragon, uh, laptops. Windows ARM still has a very long way to go when it comes to support. It appears that uh, this does too, but uh, it, it, it's at least technically already supported if you can just get it running. And we'll see if Reese can run some deals by you and save you some money with tech products. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend, and I hope you guys enjoy these deals, because starting us off today, we have this Asus Tough Gaming 24-inch 1080p 165Hz gaming monitor for only $79 making it $70 off the total price. But then next up, we have the Team Group T4S Delta RGB DDR5 RAM kit, featuring 32 gigs running at 6,000 megahertz at CL30 for only $94.99 with the included promo code, making it $20 off. And then lastly, we have the really cool combo with this Cooler Master Encore 100 Max Bronze. This case comes with a cool custom 120 millimeter AIO CPU liquid cooler and an 850 watt 80 plus gold SFX power supply for only $291, making it $108.99 off for this trip combo and hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers well reese now we know the deal of what's going on with the 5090d and that does not stand for deal it stands for dragon but we thought we knew that the 5090d was going to be mostly cut down in terms of ai but it turns out that there's actually more little decreasements that nvidia tried to do with the 5090d so ai inferencing is something that's cut off but also crypto crypto mining gets slashed in its performance when it runs. You have a three second limit and then it will power limit it and it will make it so that you can't actually effectively crypto mine. However, none of this affects gaming. The 5090D allegedly will still be just as fast in terms of gaming, but they also have multi GPU support disabled. So you can't combine them to have a render farm in one particular system. So there are limits to the 5090D that's gonna be coming out in China. This doesn't really affect the United States audience. I just wanna bring it up because I find it interesting to see how they're playing the game of uh, working with the US export restrictions. And I was curious how Square Enix was gonna play the game of getting Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to run on PCs, especially when they said that it's Steam Deck verified. How are they doing that? Well, they came out and showed the various different versions that they're gonna have, the graphics quality. And we also have the PC spec recommendations. For minimum, you only need a Ryzen 5 1400 and i3 8100, the RX 6600 A580, RTX 2060. It's, it's not the most intense thing to run. To get 1080p 30 FPS, at low, and if you watch through the video, the, the lo minimum settings definitely lose a lot of textures. They have a lot less population in terms of assets, you, and especially in the open world, grass is missing, all of that kind of stuff. Makes sense that, yes, uh, the Steam Deck will struggle, uh, but it will actually be able to run it. However, in case you wanted to run to your store and get a 6750 GRE, those are being discontinued. It's, it's over. January to February is when they're just gonna start clearing out inventory, and there will be a replacement allegedly sometime between February and March, whether that's gonna be a new RX 7000 series that's gonna get the uh, golden snake edition GSE, that could potentially be happening. We did see some of the GRE cards make it to the United States, so this is not necessarily something that only applies to China. I'm curious to see how all of that plays out, but AMD is not the only company that's getting rid of the GPUs, NVIDIA, the 4070 allegedly is getting close to the end of its availability. It's supposed to be done by the end of January, completely cleared, and then the 4060 Ti and 4060 are supposed to be cleared out by the end of Q1. So if you're looking to grab one of those cards, I don't know why you would at this point, especially with the price points that they come in at, the 4070 at $549, the 5070 is gonna come in at the exact same price point. So getting the 4070 at this, like it would have to be discounted 
disappointed in my uh, understanding for that to be worth it. But uh, in case you wanted them, they're gonna be gone soon. And you guys gone and went and left some comments in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got Ultra Vegito Godkiller saying, everybody gangsta until AMD priced the RX 9070 XT, just $1 lower than the competition. Yeah. Then Stefan saying, so the RTX 5090 is 30% faster for a 25% price bump. What an incredible upgrade after over two years. So I want to address this because 30% faster for a 25% price bump does mean that it's still giving you more performance than the price increase. However, that's the 5090, again, is not the gaming card that NVIDIA is trying to target at everybody, especially because it has major enhancements in other ways. So you have a 33% increase in VRAM, but then you also have an 80% increase in VRAM speed. You also have re-architecturing of various different cores inside the ray tracing units, as well as the tensor cores and all of the SMs. The 5090, I just, I don't think should be kept in the same conversation as the 5070, 5070 Ti, and 5080, because those I think are just more targeting the, the average person, whereas the 5090 gives you a whole lot more in various different ways. Like GDDR7 being put into the 5090 gives it a lot more capabilities on the memory side. An 80% increase in memory speed is nothing to sneeze at 33% increase in memory capacity, having 32 gigs of that really fast RAM. There's a lot going on there. GDDR7 is very expensive. You can see that has to be the case when an AMD is not even considering putting that into their cards. The RX 9000 series is going to get GPUs that are still on GDDR6 that is slower than what the 40 series had. So they're not even giving you the fastest GDDR6 that's available, and especially with NVIDIA giving you GDDR6X. There is a difference that's happening here here outside of just like the, the core counts and all of that. And then DMITC saying, if three out of four frames has flaws, then you'll definitely see them in motion, which is true if they all have the same flaws, right? But the thing with AI generated frames is that they are not the same frames. It's not saying we give you one AI generated frame and then all of a sudden we just triple it. So there's three more of the exact same frame. They're actually being rendered. They're actually being generated by the tensor cores, so they are going to be different. And the differences in what the AI is generating is going to be different in each frame. And so, yes, you will have more of them, but you will have fewer of the exact same issue because they are changing between the different frames. It's not gonna be perfect, but looking at Digital Foundry's breakdown, there, there's significant improvements with DLSS4 before even multi-frame gen gets put into the equation. The, the just reorchestrating of how they're using the transformer to make all th these things happen, it is going to look better than it currently does. Hopefully latency is better. I wanna see more about it, but it's, it's not gonna be as cut and dry, I think, as the internet's trying to convince everybody of. And and JMT saying, reminder that the video is recorded well in advance. I guess the night before due to editing and everything involved in that, there was no way Brett and the team could have included Switch 2 coverage when the trailer was released just an hour ago, to which I responded, frick Nintendo. There was a lot of comments being like, Switch 2 just dropped, Switch 2 just dropped, and man, I'll get to it when I get to it. Freaking Switch 2. Uh, but then Fiaz saying, do you feel like the NVIDIA's T234 processor in the Switch 2 is underwhelming? No, I, I really don't. I think when it comes to Nintendo's strategy, they get a lot out of their hardware. Yes, certain games perform like absolute garbage on the Nintendo Switch, but at the same time, they have games that run phenomenally well when you consider that they're running on a Maxwell chip from however long ago. Breath of the Wild and uh, Tears of the Kingdom actually have a lot going on in them. And I think that Nintendo is just not pushing to have the greatest graphics, the highest frame rate, that's never been their MO. And so I think having an RTX 20 series chip, yes, several generations old at this point, it's a little, a little under, but it's gonna be PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro level performance in terms of when you're handheld and docked. That's still fine. That's still plenty, especially with what Nintendo tries to accomplish with their games. Will that mean certain games get graphical decreases when they release on the Switch 2? Yes. Hopefully it's not as bad as like the Mortal Kombat 1 uh, issue or like Hogwarts Legacy when it when it came to that. They can stop doing stupid things like releasing uh, Kingdom Hearts Trilogy to the Switch, but you actually aren't playing it off of the hardware. It's actually being cloud streamed in. I, I think it's competent enough. I think that I'm not disappointed by Nintendo putting lower class hardware in their console because that's what they do. They do this. We know that this was gonna happen. It's not It's not uh, underwhelming because I, I'm 
just totally whelmed by Nintendo right now. I was expecting exactly this and they're not giving me any more. And I'm not giving you any more until hot news on Tuesday. I'll see you back here for more of that stuff that we give you.